And so this was a very, you know, like a very kind of like, like an eye-opening moment for me to realize that just producing content doesn't really work. Like at some point you are gonna need uh, to basically give them the extra push. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the SaaS SEO So. Today I'm very excited to be joined by um, someone who uh, I have met, I think it was in the beginning of uh, this year uh, while I was in Turkey. And um, let me tell you how I got to, uh, to uh, meet uh, this guy. Uh, I watched, um, I think it was uh, this year, yeah, that I visited his website. And as soon as I landed there, I was like, okay, that's something different. You know, I haven't seen th something like that before. Then I read a guide of him and I was like, okay, I see what this guy is doing. And after that, I don't know how, but uh, we got on a call and I realized that besides knowing his stuff, he also is a really, really good guy. And I'm very excited to be welcoming Alan Silvestri to the show. Alan, welcome. Hi, Georges. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your very kind words. And yeah, it's, it's great to be here. I'm excited to, to talk about link building, content promotion, and just like nerd out on SaaS. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So the first thing I would like to, uh, to know, and obviously I would, our listeners as well would like to know, is um, what got you to where you are uh, today? Okay, could you mm -hmm. share uh, some things uh, from your journey so far, uh, just so we get an idea of what the background uh, is. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I started my my work life doing something totally different than what I do now. I've been working for nine years in an office job. I was like an electric engineer uh, kind of uh, guy. And so I worked there. That was basically the first job that I got, like basically out of school. Uh, yeah, it's the kind of job that I didn't really like. And also at the same time, I was playing uh, like music with my band. So I started looking for ways uh, that I could basically make money online so that I could like go around and play shows with the band, right? So I did the classic uh, how to make money online search on Google. <laughs> yeah. And I slowly, slowly stumbled upon, I think it was affiliate websites at the beginning. So I got started doing some affiliate websites, the classic Amazon affiliates. And that's kind of like how I learned or basically I started learning at, like SEO, search engine optimization, and particularly the link building. So, so I basically got to a point where I had a, a small affiliate website that, were, that was making some money. I was able to quit my office job. And then I got hired by some other guy in Australia. He had like an authority site, in the kind of medical science space. It was a very big site, uh, making quite a lot of money. And uh, he essentially put me in charge of the outreach link building part of the websites because that was the only department that they didn't have at the time. So that was a very cool opportunity for me. I only knew like the basics of SEO and I didn't basically know anything about link building at the time. So it was a very cool opportunity for me to just like sit down and basically dive yeah, essentially into everything that I could about link building, content promotion, and outreach. And that was also the opportunity that kind of got me to uh, yeah, figure out my own uh, specific approach that then I transitioned to the agency that we have now, which is Growth Gorilla. So I was able to essentially do everything myself for like the first like yeah one or two years. And then after a while, I was like getting more clients and obviously I couldn't do the job myself anymore. So I started by hiring the first role, which was a link prospector. So he was basically helping me finding and qualifying the website and I was still sending the emails. Then with more time, I also hired the other role that we have now, which is the outreach manager. So the people that actually do the templates and send the email and that was basically how we got started. Yeah. Okay. I see. That's, that's very interesting. I didn't know about, uh, about your affiliate uh, background, that's that's very interesting. Yeah. Was there a moment then, that back then, when you said that, uh, when you were introduced, let's say, to link building and uh, con promotion and all these interesting things that you said that, okay, this thing you know works. Uh, there is definitely something here. 
that made you uh, say that I could turn this easily to my own business? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wouldn't say that I could turn this easily because it wasn't easy at all. But uh, yeah, there was a very specific moment. And the thing that got me into what I do, but also the way that we do it, is, is the fact that the site that I was working for, this authority website, was basically producing like a ton of content, like, like I'm not even joking, like, like 20 articles per month or something like that but super high quality articles written by like, like medical professionals and that kind of stuff. And so the, like the reason that they wanted to get started on link building and content promotion was because the articles that they were producing, like essentially weren't ranking at the same point. So they, they realized that they needed the extra push and that was basically the links. And so this was a very, you know, like a very kind of like, like an eye-opening moment for me to realize that just producing content doesn't really work. Like at some point you are going to need uh, to basically give them the extra push. And so that's kind of like how I got started with that. Yeah, that's great. I see. And so today you are uh, leading uh, the efforts and the strategy and everything uh, uh, at Growth Gorilla. Uh, could you mm -hmm. give us, um, uh, you know, could you get us like inside your world? Uh, what uh, is Growth Gorilla? What you know uh, do you do, and what type of companies uh, are you uh, usually serving? Mm -hmm. So Growth Gorilla is a B two B SaaS content promotion service. So we mainly do uh, uh, link building outreach. Uh, we like to call it content promotion and distribution because for us, yeah, basically uh, like email. So cold email and outreach is a way to distribute the content that you're producing. So some people say that content distribution is like publishing on social media and doing some kind of other like paid ads. For us, it's still distribution because what we do is we take the content that the clients have and we put it like, like on the web and we show it to other people that might find it valuable. So that's, yeah. So essentially that's what we do and like the way that we try to uh, to operate is that we try to find like companies that have the content uh, publishing production process and team in place but that are lacking the content promotion side of things so we essentially try to come in as their like extended content promotion team so we really want like the clients that work with us to to kind of treat us as an extension of their own team so that everything can kind of flow well together. Like they publish the content, we take the content, we promote it, we get links, the content ranks, and that's like a loop, right? Okay, I see. Yeah, it, it makes sense. But I would like to ask here, with regards to that, have you, in your experience uh, working with B2B SaaS companies, have you seen that there is a specific type of company in terms of their, the life cycle stage that they, they are at um, that, you know, could invest uh, or initiate an effort around uh, con promotion link building uh, and i'm only asking because in many cases we are an agency ourselves and we have seen that there are some companies very uh, early stage that come to us and they just you know for the wrong reasons they want to work with us uh, but what we say is that you know what it's too early you haven't even got to product market fit first like don't do that, you know, don't invest in con SEO or maybe SEO because con is a different thing. You can invest in con from day one, at least as I see it. But I would like to hear your thoughts on that because I think that it's extremely important to understand at the same time what is the best, let's say, if there is, in your opinion, a stage at which a company should initiate an effort around con SEO and uh, around uh, con promotion and uh, link building. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So our target client is. It's typically companies that are like profitable and typically this means like at least uh, 1 million in annual revenue and that like also have product market fit obviously so be besides that there are some companies that come to us as well and they maybe have seen us on a podcast they've seen like like one of our articles or they have spoken to one of our clients and and so they come to us looking for content promotion so then I essentially take a look at the blogs and I see that they maybe have only like three articles and the quality is not even that great. 
So at that point, I basically tell them, no, it's too early. Like you need to have a proper content strategy and a content publishing uh, like framework in place so that you're publishing maybe two, three, four, five articles per month. And so we're able to, to essentially assist you in your content production effort, right? So the two reasons that we typically turn clients away are uh, basically these two. So the first is the lack of content or a content strategy. And the second one is that they did uh, still find product market fit. So they like either not profitable or we actually see that the software maybe is not, is maybe not offering like a very clear solution to a specific problem. So they still don't kind of know what they're doing and who they're talking to as well, because that's very important to us, especially sending out rich emails. We kind of like need to know uh, who their audience is and how they speak to their audience. So this is all things that like uh, SaaS companies typically learn. Yeah, basically after they found like proper, uh, yeah, product market fit essentially. Yeah, I see. Uh, you mentioned something there. Uh, the first reason I think was uh, the number of pieces of con. Uh, that's one thing. I'd like to know if you have any uh, qualitative uh, criteria as well. Like, do you evaluate uh, the prospects that come to you, uh, which are B2B SaaS companies, when it comes to the quality of the con that they produce? Meaning mm -hmm. that, look, Alan, we have, for example, an inventory of 300 blog posts. Um, I guess that this is more than enough for us to work together. But will you actually evaluate the content inventory and say, you know what, yeah, you have it and you produce content, but no, you know, the, the quality isn't there. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, that's like probably the most important thing. So like assess companies can like maybe even produce just like one new article per month, but if the article is great, that's going to give us like way more opportunities to promote the article, send it to people and get back links basically. Yeah. But even if they're producing like 10 articles, maybe like 300 words and maybe the articles are just like, like product or like software updates. So it's not really something that we can like pitch to journalists or to other people. Right. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. So it's really important quality versus quantity. It's probably, yeah, quality is definitely more important than quantity at this point. But yeah, like a company can, uh, in terms of quantity, yeah, either like one or two pages per month or or even 10 pages per month is kind of the, it's kind of like the same. It basically depends on which uh, goals the company has. So if they want to scale it faster, yeah, it's okay to, to produce like more content basically. Okay, I see. Uh, and based on that, I would like to ask something else as well. Um, do you, are you also involved in terms of helping them? Like, okay, we, we may not have something that you can promote right now, but can you please help us? Can you please let us know what do we need to produce uh, in order for, like, to make your work easier? And uh, just an example, um, could it be like, I don't know, a statistics page? Could it be an infographic? Could it be like that? Are you, you mm -hmm. know, so much involved into the process or mm -hmm. how does that work? So typically no, and that's for the reason that I explained before. So basically we want to just come in as the content promotion team for a company that already has that piece covered. So we want them to already have a content strategy because that's not what we do. We essentially just like take the content and try to promote it, right? So essentially we don't tell them which content they need to do. That should be up to them. The thing that we do is essentially we start off with every client with a 12 month uh, roadmap. So we plan like exactly the pages that we're gonna work on with them for the next uh, year or so. And the thing that we'd also do for those pages is to determine if the on page is on point, because essentially uh, if we uh, like build backlinks to pages that are not like well optimized or that are not targeting the right keyword, that doesn't work, right? So all the pieces of the chain needs to be there. And so essentially something that I might do is tell them, hey, you're targeting the wrong keyword for this page, but maybe you could change the, the keyword. Or maybe I noticed that the other pages that are ranking on page one for this keyword are mentioning these five topics that you're not talking about. So you should include these to make it the best resource possible on the topic. So these kind of like a, a little, yeah, like on page changes 
sometimes maybe I've seen clients that had like multiple pages on the same or related topic. And so that's basically keyword cannibalization. So we don't want that because otherwise the content that we're promoting is basically like competing against the other resource that they have. <laughs> and so we tell them like you should merge the two pages to make it just one page on the topic. And yeah, this sort of stuff. But that's okay. definitely something that we do. Yeah, I see. Uh, another question that I have for you, I know that you're doing uh, email outreach as, as, mm -hmm. as part of your process, obviously. And I don't know about you, uh, I guess that you receive a lot of emails, cold emails as well. But yeah. I see these emails and obviously the, the vast majority of them are uh, trying to sell me something, you know, a service, even SEO services. <laughs> In many cases, they, tr they try to yeah. sell SEO services, which is crazy. But, um, and I'm really wondering, you know, is there going to be someone who is going to reply to that email? And yeah. The, the bad thing about it is not that, you know, this is happening. Okay, this is happening. We have to accept that as a fact. The bad thing is, as I see it at least, when someone like a good marketeer uh, who has done uh, her research, who, who you know, personalized uh, the, the pitch and so on and so forth, uh, sends an email, we are, you know, as I see it at least, uh, kind of uh, negatively biased towards uh, a cold email. And I would like to hear from you, you know, how does that work for you guys and uh, whether or not you see resistance and whether or not you see that uh, people are, as the time passes, more, uh, let's say, negatively biased towards uh, cold mm -hmm. emails. Yeah. So it definitely got more difficult in the last few years because, like, like yeah, more and more people started doing the same things as well. So basically, since Backlinko, Brian Dean started publishing the skyscraper article, everybody started doing the same technique. Everybody started doing like broken link building. And the problem is that everybody is using the same exact templates that they found out there, right? So the main like thing that I would say is, is don't use templates or at least like create your own templates. So make it unique, like make it stand out because as soon as somebody sees like the usual framework so one link and then a phrase and then another link like it's kind of like it tells you already that this is a link building like yeah kind of like pitch because yeah you essentially see the first link which typically is their page and the second is a like a fake compliment and the third is exactly like the link that they should be linked to so as soon as somebody sees this framework that's basically like a like an archive, like instant archive, like for me, right? So try to like revert the framework at least so it doesn't look like that. And so somebody can at least like start reading the email and not archive it immediately. Uh, uh, that's the first thing. And the second thing that I would like, su like to suggest to people is to see, uh, yeah, email outreach, not as a way to build links, but yeah, actually as a way to promote the content. So this is why I like to call what we do content promotion because we don't go after the link, like necessarily the link are a byproduct, right? Of what we do. But the, yeah, the main like reason that we send emails is because we have great content that we want people to see. So tell them something about the content. Like you have a statistic that, like, yeah, that you want to show them. You have some great visuals that you want to show them. So stuff like that uh, typically works. So if you pair the two things together, a uh, template that doesn't look like the same stuff that everybody's doing and some very good like reason to reach out to people, that typically works better already. And so then, I mean, so after like every, yeah, those two things have been done. It's just a matter of being genuine. So, so even those fake compliments, that kind of stuff doesn't work. So either like, yeah, like be genuine or, or just leave it out. And yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a matter of, uh, yeah, also I would say, uh, be short and to the point because people don't have a lot of time and you don't want to waste their time. So, see, so yeah, I get a lot of those emails as well, like sales emails from people selling like, yeah, I don't know, like like development services on LinkedIn, I get like those kind of yeah email messages, which is like like this long, and it doesn't even make me want to read it. So so I just archive it, you know. So 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 yeah, be short, uh, to the point, uh, be unique, and try to 
offers some kind of value. That's like the three main points. Okay, thank you very much for saying that. I would like to ask you in the same vein. I feel that link building, of course, we are not doing link building, but I feel, uh, and we are exposed to emails that our clients uh, send and receive uh, for link building purposes. It's kind of, nowadays, it's kind of transactional. You know, okay, I will give you the link only if you give me a link back. Okay, do you, do you see that in your campaigns? Uh, do, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we see it a lot, unfortunately. Uh, so typically, we try to uh, to accommodate those requests, uh, like in the case where maybe we can offer something different than a link because we don't like to do like a lot of link exchanges or or even payment, especially. So if we can, we maybe try to offer like a free subscription of the software, a free trial, or like an affiliate link, for example, maybe if the clients have it. Uh, so yeah, try to offer something that actually has some extra value and that actually maybe shows them the software, like if you can, right? And obviously I know that even offering this stuff, yeah, it's basically against Google terms of service, yeah, definitely. but at least like if you have to offer something, yeah, make it something that is useful and that maybe, like that maybe can also bring you some extra, like some new customer maybe down the road, you know? Because uh, it's always good to have some new free trials and some people like using the tool that you, yeah, that you have. Okay. Uh, the next question that I would like to ask you uh, regarding all this, I guess that you are servicing, you know, uh, you're serving mm -hmm. clients, B2B SaaS companies, high growth companies. And I would like, I, I'm, I'm very interested to know whether or not they are interested in the ROI, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you get the what's the ROI question? And, yeah. uh, and how do you respond to that? I mean, because I know that defining the ROI or making pro projections is difficult when it comes to, for example, Cond SEO. And I only assume, I haven't done the exercise, but I only assume that it's even more difficult when it comes to link building. So what are your thoughts on that? And how do you usually respond to what's the ROI question? So yeah, we get that a lot. Uh, recently, I started to put our service in a way that clients don't ask the question because I'm trying to sell the service as a way to, uh, yeah, to essentially be part of the organization by promoting the content. So it's, it's basically just like a natural extension of their team for them. So they get to a point where they don't even like think about the ROI because it just makes sense for them to have this extra part of their uh, team as well. Uh, but the, yeah, for the people that ask, what is the ROI? I tell them that it's typically six to 12 months when they can start uh, seeing some results. So essentially the problem with like, yeah, the thinking that most people have is that content is linear, right? So content production is linear. So you have like a staircase. So you probably see like maybe two pages one month, two pages the next month to the month after. And the problem with link building is that it's not that linear. So so link building and content promotion is actually exponential. So it started off like very slow and then it, yeah, it takes off straight away. Yeah, basically after a while when the results starts to compound. And so the problem with most people is that they maybe just like work on it for two, three months, but they don't see results because it takes a lot of time. And so they just like stop and think that it doesn't work. So what I try to uh, tell people and let them know, like also looking at the results of other clients that we have, is that it takes time and they need to be yeah in this for the long term so this is also the main reason why we try to also do uh, like basically 12 month agreements with clients uh, we might offer a one-off campaign in case the client is interested in just like seeing our process because maybe they've tried other companies and they want to see what we do but typically most of our clients are on a 12 month agreement and so yeah just being in it for the long term some clients uh, basically uh, like I, yeah, I kind of instruct them or they already have this process in place. I kind of suggest them uh, to put in place some traf uh, some uh, kind of tracking with Google Analytics. So, so to track like the free trial signups from their blog articles. So then what we do is we take a look at which pages are already ranking quite well. So maybe the ranking like at the bottom of page one or, or page two of Google. And I tell them uh, put uh, the Google tracking the goal, yeah, like an uh, goal tracking on those pages. And then we start to work on these pages, like all at once, maybe. So we, 
So we try to cover the spectrum of those, we call it the quick win pages. And maybe after like two, three links per page, we start seeing some of them that move up the results better than the others. So that's when we double down on those. And then at that point, the clients have the goal tracking in place. They can see exactly which of those blog articles are bringing in more free trial conversions. And that's essentially the best way that we have to measure the ROI of link building and content promotion. Okay, that's very interesting. Thanks for sharing. Uh, you mentioned that link building works, uh, I guess, in most cases exponentially. Is that because of uh, passive uh, link acquisition after a certain point, like you have visibility and so uh, this page naturally is going to acquire links or because you have kind of streamlined the process by then and you know what works for that particular page uh, and so mm -hmm. on. Um, yeah. So it's a mix of a few different factors in my opinion. So, so one is definitely what you mentioned. So, so natural link acquisition, once the pages that you are working on start to rank maybe in the top five results. And the other factors are, uh, first off, so if you're using a new email account for outreach, that's gonna take time to warm up. So typically we warm the account for maybe the first two, three months, we send very few emails and then we slowly ramp it up. So, so by month, like, yeah, between month four and month six, that's typically when the email is warmed up like fully and we can send out the full amount of email. So you basically see like by month six, you have a few pages that are ranking, the emails are sending out fully, and you have a bunch of campaigns that you've started working on in the first three months that are now sending at the same time. So it's basically like a snowball effect. So you send more emails, you get more links, the pages start ranking more and they get more links as well. And so, yeah, I think this is the main reason. It just the fact that it, it kind of takes time for the process to work. So email warming up, sending of the campaign, but it also takes time sometimes for Google to actually see the links, right? Yeah, <laughs> so we've seen something with a few clients where maybe we're working on a page and, the, and as soon as we build a few links in the next few weeks, the pages started dropping off the rankings, but then after a month or so, the results went like basically up and, and so they were better than before, right? So there's like this uh, kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, there's this kind of like a wait time in, in between when you build the first link and then Google needs to kind of assess the quality of the link. And then if he sees that he, so it, uh, so, so if Google sees that the, the quality of the link is good, so then at the point, yeah, they will maybe rank the page. If not, they will just keep it down. <laughs> That's okay. essentially kind of like, how we saw it working yeah it makes sense uh, i would like to ask uh, you mentioned sending emails and i think that this may be a question that people who are listening to this uh, have as well usually how does that work like are you getting access to uh, a, an email account you know set up by the company or are you sending yeah. from your own email accounts mm -hmm. so we typically uh, have the clients create a specific email account that we can only use for outreach and so this depends on the client. Really, some clients want to use us like, like maybe the CEO of the company, if it's a small company. Some clients create a fake persona. So somebody fake that maybe has a, like a fake title, like a head of outreach or something like that. But they typically create this email account on a secondary domain, which is similar to the main domain typically. So if your domain is company.com, maybe they do company.co. And so that's essentially to protect the main domain from being marked as spam. Because yeah, even though we don't send out a ton of emails, we maybe send out 500, 600 emails per month per client. Uh, so that's not a huge amount by any means. I know people that send like, like 80,000 yeah, emails per month. <laughs> so even though that's not a huge amount, We've seen some cases where maybe we contacted somebody that had a bad day, so they just decided to press the spam button and the account was like suspended by Google. So when that happens, the fact that we're using a secondary domain and not the main domain is protecting the main website from this. Uh, typically we are able to like to reinstate the, yeah, the email account like straight away. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of like what we do. 
Okay, that's very interesting. And what you mentioned about trying to protect the main domain, it makes perfect sense. I didn't know that. So uh, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's very useful to know. Now, yeah. you have worked with uh, a lot of B2B SaaS companies. And I mean, in your experience, have you seen that uh, when it comes to B2B SaaS specifically, uh, that is already very saturated, but uh, still, are there any things that work better um, compared to, to others? Are there specific tactics, uh, best practices that you could share with us uh, specifically mm -hmm. for B2B SaaS? Yeah. So to be honest, uh, this is basically something that I've always uh, kind of like uh, tried to fight with is the fact that like companies shouldn't be really too focused on specific tactics, but they should be focusing on a holistic approach that works for them. So some companies I've seen them like try everything like broken in building, skyscraper, uh, like infographic and all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, yeah, if you do like this approach is basically spreading like yourself too thin. So what I would recommend instead is to try some tactics and try them well. So actually do them for a few months, see if they work and then focus on the one that works for you specifically. So for us, we, essentially just do one thing which is essentially uh yeah basically taking the client's page and finding the best way that we can use to pitch that page to other people in a way that it makes sense i've heard this uh, phrase from i think it was uh, giselle navarro from neo mom it's a it's, a, it's a, a, a digital pr agency but basically she said the links are like uh, bridges that connects the pages in the web right so the two like points of the bridge, like actually need to make sense because otherwise the bridge would fall down. <laughs> Essentially, yeah that's, a, yeah, that's a good metaphor. I like it. So that's the way that I, yeah, that I like to see it. Uh, try to find something that works for you, but make it a holistic approach that you can use like forever or at least for one two years. Especially since like things change so fast in the SEO and marketing world, but try to find something that is not just like the quick tactic that you just read on the last. Uh, like newsletter or something like that and so this is what yeah what we've been doing for the last uh, three years now we've just been using this one process and obviously yeah we continually try to improve the process try to improve the email try to improve the systems the tools that we use but fundamentally the framework that we use is always the same and so yeah for software companies i mean the main thing that i realized is that most software companies have uh, like three or four main types of pages that they might like to pro to promote so they have the home page and so with the home page basically what do you do like you can promote the home page to list list article that maybe mention like top 10 uh, tools for this and for that so if you build this kind of backlinks to the home page it typically does two things the first one is it can bring you some referral traffic if the articles are ranking on page one of Google, for example, and some customers and trials. And the second thing is that it increases the overall like authority of the site. So the, uh, the domain rating or domain authority, uh, which in turns kind of helps basically all of the other pages rank higher as well. So the first thing that we normally do is we do a homepage campaign to kind of start to spread out the word also about the tool, especially if it's kind of like a newish company, we like to do that campaign first. And then secondly, we start uh, to build backlinks to the other types of pages. The other types of pages are the blog articles, and that's our main bread and butter, basically. So for the blog articles, we locate the quick win pages. So the pages are ranking like already quite well, but that need the extra push. So we work on those first uh, to try and increase traffic and signups like yeah, as fast as possible. And that's typically like within 60 to 90 days. And then once we work on those, then we can also focus on the other pages which normally are maybe the alternative pages. So we call them uh, 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 landing pages. So like alternative pages or like case studies. So, so more of the bottom of the funnel kind of pages. And yeah, like ultimately, if the client want to also create some linkable assets like like an infographic or a, or a, a research study, stuff like that, but we can also work on those. And those are more uh, like a way typically to get more backlinks faster, 
because yeah if you do like a very well done infographic or a, a research study that's that's very current and yeah maybe like very well done and with some unique data you can use that to get maybe 30 backlinks in a month which is not typically like the case right so yeah like for SaaS companies at the end of the day yeah i wouldn't focus on uh on one or two strategies but try to identify the pages that you have to work with and try to see and look for an approach that works for these specific pages that you have that's that's what you like to do yeah i like that um you mentioned earlier about uh companies uh, SaaS companies that have to be more strategy driven instead of you know tactics driven and this is something that we try to fight as well uh, with our own clients that tactics will work until you know a certain time okay and i think that a good strategy should have some tactics some good tactics as well uh, but as i see you cannot be dependent on on tactics you you have yeah. to have a long term vision as to where you you would like to 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 get things uh, you also mentioned comparison pages and alternatives i i'm really interested to know whether or not whether or not people you know are willing to link back to those pages mm -hmm. so typically the way that we do those campaigns it's one of the most difficult campaigns but we have still like been able sometimes to get some links for those so the way that we try to build back into those pages is for example you have like your software versus like zoom or or like like zoom alternatives and stuff like that so what we try to do is to find pages that maybe talk negatively basically about zoom so that we can essentially get in there and tell them hey we have this alternative page that is talking about some other software that are a bit better because maybe they don't do this thing that zoom does that is like like bad or something like that right so we try to find pages where it makes sense again as I said before, we try to build these kind of bridges between pages in the web. So essentially, yeah, it can either be uh, these kind of pages that talk badly about the other software, or it can either be, uh, uh, yeah, it can be maybe other software, like, yeah, even your competitors. Sometimes you can like, maybe offer them to do a link exchange. So either they include you in their alternative page and you include them and stuff like that. So it's basically like getting together like against the common enemy which is like the biggest software in the niche sometimes okay that's interesting i didn't know these things happen but yeah that's that's very interesting to know um i would like to and i guess that we are running uh, sort of on, on time so this will be my last one i would like to ask you let's say that someone uh among the, the listeners that we have is uh working at growth or marketing uh, demand gen whatever inside the SaaS company and they they like what they hear, uh, but they don't have a strong case to make internally. What would you say to those people to, to help them uh, make a case and you know, uh, be uh, in a better position to, to invest in uh, such an effort? Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of things I usually like to uh, like tell people or show people. The first one is that the main reason why somebody would need content promotion is if they got to a point where basically they have a bunch of content out there and they don't see the results that they were expecting from it. So at that point, I simply tell them, like, show me your top five most competitive pages that are not ranking as well as they should. And I'll tell you why they're not ranking. And typically the answer is that they yeah, either lack specific backlinks to the page or specific types of backlinks. So maybe they have like backlinks from like weak sites or they're using the wrong anchor text or the other reason is that maybe the whole site as a as maybe a weak domain rating so in that case it's a matter of building more links to the home page uh, to the whole site so that those pages will rank as well so so yeah typically just like ask them to show me these pages and that usually solves the problem but the main thing that like people need to think about is that there's like so much content being produced out there nowadays like millions of pages every day millions of tweets videos podcasts yeah everything so it's really difficult if you think about it for your target clients to see your content right especially if the keywords are competitive if there's also like really big companies producing content on those keywords and so there's a lot of noise and so the only way to stand out from the noise is is yeah essentially to reach out to people so be proactive 
get the content out there. It can either be via email outreach like we do, but it can also be via podcast. So, so like you're doing as well, uh, via video and stuff like that, right? So, so there's a lot of ways, but the main reason is that there's a lot of noise. And if you want to try and compete at some point, you're gonna have to, yeah, to do something that the others are not doing. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. Um, Alan, where people can find more about you and uh, Growth Gorilla? Yeah, so we have our website is the is probably the best place, which is mygrowthgorilla.com. And then I'm on Twitter a lot. Uh, you can find me at, I think it's, I think it's Alan G. Gorilla, something like that. Probably, I don't actually remember, but it, yeah, it should be that. But you can find me by the Growth Gorilla page as well. And then, yeah, I mean, that's it. I also have a personal site, which is alansinvestory.me. Uh, yeah, where I publish like blogs and thoughts and stuff like that about like my passions. So yeah, that's it. Alan, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.